Hello and welcome to Tabla Talks. My name is Kuljit Bamra. I'm a record producer, musician and a composer. And in this episode, I'd like to look at how an orchestra works. And I'm particularly aiming this episode at Indian musicians who are interested in working in an orchestral environment. And also people like my dad, who, when I spoke to my dad a few years ago, he saw an orchestra for the very first time that I was performing with, and he really thought that the conductor who was standing in front with the stick was the composer of the music. And I said, no, Dad, it's my music. <laughs> but um, you can't really blame people for not knowing the internal workings of an orchestra. So I thought I'd spend a bit of time in this episode to give you a very quick overview of how an orchestra actually works. Now, before we look at the actual orchestra itself, I'd like to uh, just point out a few definitions of the creative team. And in the creative team, you can have someone who is a composer. The composer is the person who has created the material uh, and composed the music. So maybe sat down at a piano or a harmonium or even sung a tune. And that person is the composer. There may be a lyricist, a separate person who's written the lyrics if it's a song. Then there is someone who is an orchestrator. And the orchestrator is the person who then takes the composer's idea and creates the way for an orchestra to play it. Then you have the orchestra itself, which can be anything from 15 to 20 people, up to 100 people if it's a full symphony orchestra. And then um, if you watch an orchestra on stage, you will see a person who is conducting the orchestra. And that's the person standing in front, waving a stick. Uh, and uh, that person can also be called a musical director or an MD. So in the Western world, the conductor, musical director is the same person. And it's usually that person, I'm not really sure why, it's usually that person that gets a lot of applause and gets most of the glory <laughs> after the performance. Um, and therefore, it's quite um, easy to assume that that person has written all the music. In some cases, and in particular in film music, um, there are composers who also conduct their own music, but that's very rare. And let's just assume that the conductor is not the composer. So let's have a look at how an orchestra really works. So when the musical idea is passed to the orchestrator, the orchestrator will create what is known as a score. And here is a score here. And this is a score of a piece that um, I wrote for my mother. This is a, my mother's song called Gidda Pao Handi, or it's quite a famous song. And on the score are all the instruments listed for the conductor. It's only the conductor that has a score, and it's the conductor that has an overall view of how the music should go and can therefore control the orchestra and create the dynamics and the tempo and the feel of the orchestra. Each musician in the orchestra doesn't have a score because each musician doesn't need to know what the other instruments are playing musically. So if you're a musician in an orchestra, you will have what's called a part which is usually a one or two page piece of music. So as you can see, this is for the viola and every instrument will have a different part because they'll be playing slightly different um, notes so that when it all comes together, it sounds very beautiful and very big and rich. So that's how an orchestra works. You have a conductor who is conducting the orchestra to bring out the composition in its richest and most dynamic way. The composer is not normally on stage. The composer is the person who's written the piece. And um, each musician has a part and the conductor has a score. And with all those different components and all that different amount of paperwork, a whole piece can be performed for an audience through the voice of an orchestra. Thank mm -hmm. you.